future people, welcome to Getting Tabled. Welcome to the Joir Isle. I'm one of your hosts, Jason the Bruce, and that's Brother Bear. Hey, how you going, everyone? Welcome to our video on the Ronin. So this is the one that we left till last quite deliberately. Uh, this will yeah. be the only one of the videos that you will see does not say faction focus, because first things first, and I'm going to get this straight off the bat, because it gets asked every week, several times a week, the Ronin are not a faction. You cannot take them as a faction. That's never going to change. GCT have made it very clear that will never change. They will never be a faction of their own because that's kind of not how Ronin work. Um, so what you would need, so you can't, so you can't go, all right, I'm going to play Ronin. Yes. You can, for example, themes and then, um, and then pick, you know, within that themes, um, models that are available to you. And Ronan do have some themes that they have. Um, but you would always need to go, okay, I'm going to, my faction would be uh, Tengu, for example. Um, and then I'm going to pick a theme. Like, so then I'm going to uh, pick a theme for the Ronan. And then I, I, I can use any like anything from that. So that's basically how it sort of works. It's a little bit complicated. Um, but if you're going to play uh, Ronin, you you probably want to lean into the theme. So, for example, we touched on, um, like, House uh, uh, Hazumi and uh, Kai Kaizumi <laughs> are from the two uh, new uh, uh, two-player starter set. Yeah. Um, they've got some really remarkable themes. But um, aside from them, the only other sort of Ronin box set that they have is the Brotherhood one, which is in itself is a theme and comes with a, ver um, a bunch of... Um, uh, Ronin faction cards uh, that can be used uh, by pretty much everybody, or um, there are some that are linked to the Brotherhood theme itself, uh, which is really, really cool. Yep. Um, so the obvious question some of the new players out there may be asking is, well, if they're not a faction, why are you talking about them to begin with? Um, I, for me, personally, the easiest way to get my head around Ronin is their mercenaries, just like mercenaries in every other game. That is essentially what the Ronin were in history. Yes, obviously, this is a fantasized version of history, but that's what it's based on. Um, so some of these things you'll go around and you'll find characters, some of which we've discussed already. We discussed on Elder Brother when we were talking about um, the Shio uh, and quite a few others. Uh, there are certain <laughs> characters that you can only use in certain factions um, yep. that'll do things that maybe your faction won't. Uh, or otherwise, in the tournament scene, from what I understand, it can be quite competitive to just take Ronin guys in a certain faction. There's only certain factions that you can really get away with doing that. Ito was one of them. Shio was another. Um, so when I, I went oh. to a combat company... Yeah, I went to a combat company tournament um, uh, a while ago, and uh, one of my local players played uh, the Brotherhood, uh, which is oh, sorry, no, 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 sorry, the Blood Brothers. I'll get confused with those. Uh, the Blood Brothers, uh, which you know they have their own, um, they they have a theme, but also at the same time as they um, are sort of like unique sort of models, and they can be allied with sort of like kind of like the evil faction. So you could choose, you know. Um, Ito, if you wanted to, in this case, Joel took Silvermoon and he allied in some Silvermoon units um, yep. to back up Blood Brothers themselves. Um, and actually, he did quite well. He came third at the end, but he was um, on the top table in the last round um, against a Temple uh, list, and you know he did quite well. Um, so yeah, and, and I mean, the Blood Brothers themselves are one <laughs> lovely models. They got some of the nicest looking ones out there, yeah. and two like. Um, they got some. They got some really nifty sort of tricks. They're a little bit of a glass cannon, um, but once you figure them out, they um, they do really really well. Um, the yeah, other so there's thing, different ways. Yep. Yep. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention is when it comes to taking the Ronin characters in your faction, you need to remember that the Ronin characters cannot benefit from your faction's cards. Correct. Yeah, unless it says otherwise, unless it says they can, uh, which the majority of the time it, can't, it it doesn't. But so, for example, I'll use Minamoto because it's you know, um there is an event called Hasty. Uh, uh, sorry, there is an event called Justice Scratch, uh, which basically halves the damage. Um, if and it says only on a Minamoto model only. So Ronin don't benefit from that. So if Ronin was to get hit and you wanted to use the Justice Scratch, 
event card, it wouldn't work. Um, also, Ronin can't benefit from event card. Oh, sorry, uh, um, enhancement cards or um, anything from your faction. Um, but you can bring in Ronin um, enhancement cards and event cards, which they will benefit from, um, including your models as well. Uh, so your your faction's models, unless uh, so the card you- says otherwise. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, that's how that's how they work. Um, so on the back of each uh, Ronin model's uh, card, you'll see there's a faction logo, which will indicate which faction they can be allied with. Um, and then there's also some unique effects, which will you know, which will stipulate that. For example, eldest brother, which says he can be included in any warband that um, Roto is included. Um, yeah. So yeah. With, so. So. Yeah. Oh, I, I was did, gonna. Uh, I did an unboxing of um, the um, uh, the Brotherhood models. Uh, yep. Actually, I could put them onto, glue them onto bases and everything. So I'm super uh, excited to <laughs> talk about this uh, this box set today. Yeah, you've been waiting on this one for a few weeks now. Well, you've been <laughs> yeah. waiting on that box for how long? Two months? Three months? And when did you buy that? Um, I hadn't. I bought that box a while ago. I hadn't opened it. Um, it was on in my shelf, and it was in my box of to-do models for um, um, for Bushido. Yeah. But I decided that it's like, look, you know, we we I wanted to do the unboxing of the two-player star set for ages, so I was like, oh, I'll do that later on. But yeah. yeah. All right. So the main box that we're going to be looking at today is the Brotherhood box, obviously. But we wanted to touch on the themes first. Yep. So. Um, obviously we've already touched on the Kaiozumi family and the Hozumi family in our two player starter set discussion. So if you want to look at those again, you can have a look at that. Um, do you want to go through the Imperial March? Yeah. So, um, the Imperial March is, is another thing that's unique to Ronin, um, with the Imperial March, um, it allows, so the models that are permitted in this is imperial models. So in your model sort of like allocation, it'll, it'll tell you what it is and if it says imperial. So this is, a, for example, like the Golden Sentinel, yep. uh, Karu, he's a Ronin. Um, um, they'll have imperial in there. You can add them uh, to it. Um, so the imperial theme, so it says, after deployment, choose one enemy model to gain a death sentence marker. Enemy models cannot spend key tokens to remove death sentence markers. That's the um, that's the ability of the Imperial March theme. Um, so in the law, the it's basically the the, uh, the three sisters and they're chasing down the um, the Blood Brothers. Um, I think the Blood Brothers killed somebody in the family, um, and they're um, they're seeking out revenge and they've sort of brought along their recruitments uh, like the Golden Sentinel, uh, and Karu, for example. Um, and um, Takashi Marco can also be taken as well. He's a, he's a, he's a great model as well. Um, did you want to touch on the sisters or did you want to go into maybe the other theme like the, the Blood Brother? Oh, I think we can just touch on the themes for now and try to keep it focused. Um, the next one coming up is Strategic Deployment, uh, which is yep. very generic sounding. Um, <laughs> so this theme doesn't have any specific restrictions. So this is one of the ones that you could, in theory, take somewhere else. Uh, the theme is, when recruiting, you may make two separate warbands of the same faction. For deployment, choose which to play. If both players are using this theme, show both lists to your opponent and choose in secret which you play. Declare at the same time. Any unique models may only be recruited into one of these warbands. Non-unique models may be duplicated in both ri- in both lists. Uh, yep. In a timed event, both players have five minutes to choose which warband to use. So this is yeah. very much one of your "Hey, I get to play the meta" type strategies. You don't get any other bonuses though. You're already getting two lists. You don't get anything else. Yeah, this is not a bad um, list. Um, this is good. For if you're playing in a tournament and you you know you want to build like a couple of lists now, just like you know with the with this theme as well, you can use it in your faction. So let's say for example, I wanted to take, um, I wanted to have all my um, my models that don't fit in, say a, a Minamoto 
or um, like a she host sort of like a theme. Like let's say I wanted to take a bit of everything. I could use this theme if I wanted to in my army and then I could create my list. So that's how that sort of works. I think it all it's also the same for uh, orders for battle, but we'll touch on that in a minute. Yeah. Um, this is really good. Um, I, I've seen it used as well in a tournament. Um, he was able to create a couple of different lists and sort of sort of shoot on the fly. Um, and so he basically sort of like said, okay, what mission are we playing? Are we playing like a, um, are we playing like an, uh, an objective one? Then, um, you know, so touching the objectives and sort of influencing them, I'm going to use this sort of list or are we playing like a zone of control mission? He sort of built two lists for that. So yeah, it was like, like it's called, it was very strategic and he was able to, um, he was able to pull off a bit of um, options there. Um, yeah. And he did quite well in the tournament as well. Um, I'll touch on ordered uh, battle. Yep, which okay. is a grandmaster theme. This is what Cody was using. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, um, I believe also this is the same list that um, what is it? Um, the winner of the uh, the uh, blood and blood and deed um, grandmaster uh, took with Minamoto. Um, I think it was Al. Was it? Uh, his name was? Yeah, he took this one. Uh, so. After recruiting the warband um, to the correct rice cost, choose another 30 rice of cards as reserves. This is not added to the main list, but kept separate. The warband with and without reserves must be legal. Before deployment, you may switch cards in the reserves with cards in the main list. The main list must remain legal, so it has to be the 100 points. Uh, show the new list to your opponent before the game. In a timed event, you have five minutes to make uh, the substitutions. So this allows you to basically, you're playing with 130 uh, rice, but you, you, can, you can swap it on the fly as well. I think this is a little bit more stronger than the strategic deployment um, because you, you have to sort of make two diff sort of different lists. Um, I like this one because... You, you, you're coming, you're, you're, you've got a, an idea in mind of what your list wants to be, but this allows you to add in substitutions for like uh, for armies that you may not necessarily face. Uh, so, for example, you might take some fire kami or an extra fire kami, or uh, you might take, um, you know, like a heavy hitter or something uh, that, you know, will stop ninjas. You can add that into your army. Um, so it has that ability as well. So I, I do like Ordered for Battle. It's quite cool. Yeah. The big trap with these two, obviously, is the whole everything must be legal thing. Because obviously the trap is that I can have an extra 30 points. I can just take anything I want. And then forgetting that one particular thing, and then it automatically makes it not legal, and then you've screwed it. That's where you have to be careful with these sort of things. Just because you're getting a bonus doesn't mean that you can't focus. You, you do need to be careful with that sort of stuff. So it, it yeah, just nice. it, it means that, that you have a little bit more flexibility. And obviously, because you're getting that flexibility, you don't get any extra bonuses. So there is a downside to this as well. Yeah, I do like both of those themes, those Rona themes. Uh, strategic I do prefer this over like, the strategic, but... Yeah, personally. but I mean, they're really, really cool. Um, I think what we might we'd want to talk about the Brotherhood thing. Did you um, see yep. as we, we'll go in box set? <clears throat> so, Brotherhood. This theme... You only have Hiroto models permitted. So, friendly models gain coordinated attack friendly. You may recruit models into this theme as if you had recruited a Hiroto model, even if you do not recruit Hiroto. So, Hiroto is Black Eagle and or Drunken Master, depending on which version of the character you have. Yeah. So, um... That's how that sort of thing works. So um, basically, uh, the story with like the Brotherhood sort of box set is these are all the models that uh, Hiroto met along uh, in his travels, sort of like in in exile. Um, you know, after sort of, sort of fleeing the uh, the Dragon Wars sort of battle, and um, after his son sort of died, obviously when he became drunken master, um, and so he met like you know these sort of like he met Batu, he met like eldest brother. Uh, he also met like um, uh, the, 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 the the lone swordsman, uh, which is like a duo sort of act. Um, and he's never seen. He met them in the fighting pits. He's never seen 
their sort of style of fighting before. So that gives a little bit of mystery of who they are and where they came from. Um, and then so he's sort of like, you know, after a while, so sort of picked himself up and these sort of guys were helping him out. And um, he then became, um, you know, Hiroto, like the Black Eagle. He's come back to you know, take the fight to the, the prefecture over IU. Um, so it's kind of a cool little box set, um, especially if you had, you know, the Drunken Master model, uh, if you were lucky enough to get that. There is talk about it coming into general release, uh, but I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, you could always use the Black Eagle model if you wanted. He's pretty cool um, and very, very strong. Yeah. Um, so I'll touch on, uh, so uh, uh, the big boy out of the, this, uh, uh, Kendish. So Kendish, uh, he's... Um, He's the size of a of a of, of a, a sumo, but he's not. Um, looking when I was looking and building the model, he's sort of he's sort of got like this sort of like um, Highland sort of like um, kind of Mongolian esque sort of like style to him. He's really really unique looking. Um, he costs sixteen rice. Uh, he's got three attack in his melee pool. He can boost that for three. So he's got, he's got movement four. He's your big boy. Uh, he's got he's got a lot of health. Uh, he's got nine health. Uh, he's got range of two. Uh, he generates one key a turn and can hold six. Uh, he's got uh, burning log uh, for his melee weapon, which is plus three strength. Not bad. Uh, each of your attacks will give one fire two marker, uh, and you also have reach with that burning log. Um, he's also got the ability, which is called wrestling, wrestling. Uh, which is plus one strength. He gains throw attack one, uh, throw defense one, and grapple attack one. Uh, so, uh, so that's really, really cool. Now he's got um, intermediate, uh, strong, he's stupid, and he's got vengeance prefecture. He's got two key abilities. Uh, one is called fire spin. This has got a bit of, uh, a bit of rules here. It costs you three key. It's a complex action. Um, and you can't move to have done this ability. Uh, so move this model four inches in a straight line in any direction. Any model within two inches of this model at any point in its path gains a fire two marker. Until the end phase, whilst this model is in play, models making ranged attack, sorry, ranged attacks, suffer a, a plus one modifier to the challenge number of, of ranged attack tests. In the next starting phase, the player who wins the tactical tests moves this model four inches in a straight line in any direction. Uh, then the other player moves him two inches in a straight line in any direction. Any models within two inches of this model at the at any point of the of its path gains a fire two marker. Then the effect ends. Um, so basically he becomes super uncontrollable because he's spinning those burning logs um, and he sort of becomes like a little bit of a, you know, like uh, I would, I kind of imagine him as like a fire uh, Tasmanian devil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, spinning it around and he's a bit un uncontrollable. So there's a lot of rules there. It's kind of, it, you have that ability, but obviously there is some penalty to it. Um, he's got another key feat, which is stand behind me, exclamation mark which is one key, uh, it's instance, and it just affects yourself. Uh, this model gains cover, and if it were, as sorry, this model grants cover as if it were a terrain until the end of the current activation. So basically you can block a line of sight, uh, which, is, which will help your, uh, your weaker models as well. Yeah. Uh, here's the effects. Uh, this mo model is always in cover because of, those, because of the amount of fire and smoke around him. Um, he's also got strongest enemy models, may not use melee boosts whilst in melee exchange with this uh, model. So that's pretty cool. So you can't boost your strength, oh, sorry, or your uh, melee attack, which is pretty cool. And um, his other unique effect is this model may be recruited in a warband that has recruited Hiroto. So that goes hand in hand with the theme. So the theme says you can um, you count as having Hiroto, even though you, you, know, you, don't, you can have him or you don't have to have him because of the theme. Yeah, I like him. Oh, oh, and he's on a forty mil base. This guy, so he's a, he's a big guy. <laughs> yeah, um, he can go with Shiho, the Jung, and the Silver Moon. Yeah, so if you want to take to use him in the um, uh, in the Brotherhood theme, uh, you can use him in those um with those factions. Um, I think he'd be really really good with Jung. Um, give, yeah. and also with he would give them a bit of especially their weaker models. He'll give them um, 
range cover and also the fact that it will grant them cover with that instant key ability. I actually think and that also- fire spin would work really nicely with them as well. Yeah, definitely. Gives them a bit of um a bit of punch. Um I will head across to Bartu. And Bartu uh, is the big guy on the horse. He's, uh, I think, the nicest looking model in the, in the box, just just aesthetically. He, yeah, he's a little tricky to build, but um, yeah, he's uh, um, the, a lot of his parts felt really fragile, and I just had to when you were building it, I had to. Make, oh, sorry, when I was building it, I had to just be very delicate, uh, because he's the only bow model. So the only model with a bow which, which has actually got a string on it. Like I've never seen that in a in a, in this uh, in this game, so it's quite interesting. Um, Batu will cost you twenty rice. He's got three in his melee pool. He can move five. He's got six health. Uh, he's got three in his ranged. He can boost it for three. He generates one key, but he can hold six. He has a Selim, which has sidestep attack zero. There's no strength bonus. Uh, he's also got a Buryat bow, which has light weight and reload one. There's no strength yep. bonus, but the range is 5, 10, and 15. So he does have a decent range. He yep. has a wear bonsai, or I suppose I should be saying bonsai, because there's an exclamation mark there. Mm-hmm. Uh, cavalry 5 inches, charging bonus, courage 1, uh, flank, hatred, kairai, Range defense two, unstable vengeance Kairai. Yeah, he's got two key abilities. We've got headshot, which will cost you two. You do need to be active, and the target needs to be within six inches. Target model's range weapon gains critical attack zero until enemy Kairai, um against enemy Kairai model. Mm. He also has passing strike, which will cost you one. Act, you need to be active, and it only affects him. If this model moves, sorry, if this model moved into melee this activation, it may make a normal damage roll when resolving a successful sidestep attack. Mm. So not only does he get to use his sidestep attack, but he gets to damage you as well. I that yeah. I don't think I've seen anybody else with that yet. I don't think so. I think uh, this might be sort of like a bit of a cavalry thing. Um, might just touch. I uh, might just quickly touch on uh, Banzai. So Banzai means he can make charge moves as simple actions, just to, just to inf- uh, sorry, emphasize the uh, the speed that he's got. That makes um, sense, given what Banzai. Yeah, that does make sense. Unique effects in this in the end phase. If the model is in contact with a neutral board edge, you may place this model elsewhere. The model returns to play using the flank rules. Mm. I really like that. Um, also, when targeting a non soulless model, this model's ranged weapon gains entangling. Ooh. Okay. And then finally, the same thing is you, you're going to be seeing this a lot, which is the model may be recruited into any warband that has recruited hero type. You're going to see this across the board. Uh, and he's also on a 40 mil base. Yeah, okay. All right, so the way that entangling works um, is. Uh, successful attacks um, of this weapon do not damage, but cause the target to be immobilized. Yeah. Um, so that's how that entangling works. Um, yeah, that's not bad. So he can work with the Shiho, which makes a lot of sense reading the back of that card. The Tengu, yeah. or the Ascension, and the Silver Moon. Um, I th- They're all good options. Yeah, no, he's... For 20 race, he's not bad. You just got that fast movement um, with the bow. Yeah. Um, and That's the you, only downside. You know, is yeah, he is twenty rice. He's quite expensive. Oh yeah, it's not bad. But I mean, he's 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 very very quick. Um, you know, cavalry. You know, five inches. It's not uh not bad at all. Yeah. The um, thing I like about this guy, see, medium models you would think usually are quite susceptible to ranged, but then he has the range defense to make up for it, which is. Yes. Really, really good. He's not quite as vulnerable to range as he normally would be. Yeah, so he's got Cavalry 5. So basically the way that works is before and after this uh, model performs any action, it may walk X. Yep. So, yeah, he's like he's, he'll be constantly on the move. Um, 
which is not bad. I mean, I, I like that. I mean, you can then, yeah, you can move, you can move five, and then uh, so that gives you like potentially ten inches of, um, of you know, of damage of what you can do. Um, Here's like the thing him. and the trick with this guy that I see. Realistically, because you get that extra five movement, you're bringing him in and off the board all the time, and he's going to really because it makes him unpredictable. Because I can take him, like, the moment you want to attack him, well, you can't. He's just gone off the board. And now he's going to come back in on the other side or, or wherever. And But that's really... Like, there's a reason this guy costs 20 rice. He's not an easy character to use, I would argue. But mm. when you do figure him out, this guy's going to be really powerful. Yeah. Makes it Especially really hard to have... take him out. Yeah. Makes also also the fact that he's got unstable as well kind of makes sense because of his because of the fact that he's on a horse yep. so that you know that your terrain like uh you know movement and everything that makes sense um yeah no he's not bad at all I, um I like him for twenty rice he's pretty cool yeah all right um I'm gonna talk about uh uh shoot shoot so so shoot uh he's eleven rice uh, he is a um Shensei Nai Goi. Um, <clears throat> so he is, he's is he got melee pool of two. Uh, he can boost that for two rice. Uh, so for two key. He's got movement of four. He's got six health. Uh, he has got a staff, which grants him reach and push defense zero. Not bad. Um, he has zero strength modifier on that staff. He's got dodge one. Not bad. Um, six sense, vengeance, um, intangible, and soulless. Um, so he gains vengeance against anything that has intangible and soulless on it. Um, he's got uh, uh, two key abilities. He's got Marta, uh, so which is X plus one. That's how much it will cost you. Um, this is a simple action, it just and it's a pulse of X. Uh, you can't be in base space contact uh, when you're doing it. Uh, so move X non-prone, non-held, non-reloadable uh, state markers from a friendly model to this model. Uh, so that would basically be, you know, your bleed tokens um, and, and anything like that. Um, that's not bad. Um, you could basically put all the damage onto yourself if you wanted to. Um, that would be pretty good against, you know, if, um, you know, against a lot, especially things that cause bleed and uh, and poison or even, you know, burning attacks. It's not oh, bad at all. Um, he's, his fine? second uh, key ability is Spirit Guardian, uh, which is costs three key. Um, it's an instant and it's a pulse of three. You can't have moved or be in base space contact with an enemy to do this. So when a friendly model within the pulse's area of effect is targeted by an enemy model's key feat, change the target to this model. Uh, range is measured from the original target. Uh, that's not bad at all. Uh, so you can sort of like protect, um, you can protect your sort of vulnerable models if you have them. That's not bad. Um, He's got unique effects. Uh, if this model will be taken a fear test against a model with intangible or soulless, it automatically passes. Uh, so um, he basically is like, no, I'm a, uh, he basically hates that. Yeah. Those things. Um, when this model uses a non key boost key feat, it gains a control marker after the current activation is resolved. Okay, so there's a bit of a, a penalty to have the, having like Martyr and Spirit Guardian. Guardian. Okay, and um, this model may be recruited into the warband that uh, that has Hiroto. Now, uh, Soshu can be used by um, uh, Shiho, makes sense. Uh, Colt, interesting. Uh, your favorite faction, uh, Ito. Um, Minamoto, my favorite faction, and um, Prefecture of Ryu. That's interesting. The um, only one on that, the, the only one on that that really feels odd to me is Minamoto. I, I like. Well, he's very different from Minimoto, but he doesn't feel like a character that belongs in Minimoto to me. Not that it matters, it's just interesting. I suppose you could say the um, same thing for Ryu, though. Yeah, um, I kind of like him, I think. Oh, no, I definitely yeah. like him. Just, yeah. I'd be, I would consider taking this guy in Minimoto because, I mean, just of the master ability. Um, but, I mean, so you soak up all, like, I mean... Uh, I've got friends that play uh, Ito and, you know, lots of poison markers get put out there. So it would be interesting to to do that. It It is a shame you can't remove prone markers or reload uh, markers. But, yeah. Um, yeah I mean, everything my my comment was more as a character 
he doesn't feel like he's someone that they would put up with. Because this guy is very uh, corrupted. Well, he's been burnt. Um, I think that's why. So, tangible and solid. I think think he's been burnt by a fire company. Kind of makes sense. But I also, I mean, um, yeah, no, it's it's interesting. So, what, so, I think the, the, she saying, uh, Goey, I like the, they sort of, oh, okay. So they sort of worship the, like, sort of like the old gods. Um, and the, and they, they'll sort of like work with anybody that sort of works. So that believes in that, uh, same thing as sort of like the great pilgrim. Um, so that's the sort of law wise. So it kind of makes sense. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. All right. So I'm going to... Oh, and the only other thing we need to mention, uh, just because it got missed at the start, uh, he generates two key, but he can hold eight. You can boost it for two. Um, you can boost it he's doing two, a, yeah. Yeah. And... No, no, it's all good. Uh, trooper is the next one, which is just... He's a trooper. Uh, he costs you 14 rice. He's loyal Ashigaru. He has three melee, which you can boost for three. He can move four. He has six health. He's got three ranged, which you can boost for three. He generates two key, but he can hold six. He has a katana. There's no strength bonus. It is sharp one, and it has combo attack one. He's got armor two. Bonsai. Last stand. Leadership loyal one within six inches. Light-footed. Steadfast, tireless, and vengeance to Kashi. Um, he has one ability called Rally, which will cost you three. You need to be the active player, and it's a pulse within eight inches. Remove all frightened markers from all friendly models within the pulse. Uh, his unique effects. In the starting phase, this model gains a frightened marker. Mm. So just straight up, yep, nope, I'm scared already. Uh, this model treats all enemies as if they had fear five while in melee exchange with this model, enemy models lose rise and and last stand. Uh, this model may be recruited into any war band that has recruited Hiroto. As I said before, that's going to be on everybody. So this is, uh, he has the ability to soak up the fear from everybody else, probably because they're Mm. laughing at him because he's scared so easily. No, <laughs> it's the banner that he has. Uh, so pretty much everybody with a banner, that, um, especially like Prefecture, um, have that rally ability. Um, I think the reason why he gains the Frightened Marker is this guy, uh, He's I think he's suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder um, because mm-hmm. from memory yeah. of the law, I think he's seen, he's seen some horrible, horrible things. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. The but thing I, I missed like, is uh, that he can only go with Shiho, this particular gentleman. Yeah. I I do like that he also so while in uh, melee exchange this mo- um with this model enemy models lose rise and last stand that's like a nice little thing to have especially against cult um but I mean yeah for fourteen rise I mean you pretty much you're going to be taking this guy to um gain the vengeance for Takashi if you wanted if you're going up against prefecture or the the rally ability for Shiho so um that's yeah so if you're going to be facing a lot of like things that cause fear, like cult or, uh, you know, Savage Wave or anything like that. Yeah, definitely this guy might be going with Yoshiho. Um, plus, he's also a really nice model. Um, oh, yeah, no, he's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like him. Uh, armor 2, not bad. Last Stand, that's always good. So Last Stand is like, even when he has some zero wounds, he'll have one activation left, so you can attack with him uh, if you're in combat. Um, tireless is always good. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's always good. Steadfast is always good. So Steadfast is really good. Even if he's even if he's frightened, uh, he can still allocate his dice wherever he wants to. That's that's always really, really good. Yeah. I mean he gives leadership boost to all your loyal models within uh six inches. Not bad at all. Oh, and yeah. bon- and bonds up. So he can do he can charge as a simple action. Yeah, which is just brilliant. And then finally, we have the two lone swordsmen. This is yes. 25 rice for both. So you can't take yeah. one or the other. You must take both of them. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, these, these guys are, uh, there's a, there's a bit of like an errata and stuff like that with these guys as well. They got some, they got some funky rules that, about linked ability. Uh, yeah, so the, 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 the 25 rice, as you said, for both, uh, they're unknown and they're samurai. Um, so they've got a melee pool of three. They can boost their melee for three key. They got a movement of four. They can boost that for three key. Each of them has got five health. Um, they've got a range pool of three and they can boost that for three. Um, they have got generate one key and they have a special, um, bit there. They can boost their key feats for three key. Um, they've got katana, which gives each of them plus one strength. They've got which, and they also have pierce. They've got reach. They got counter strike defense one and sidestep attack zero. That's really really good. Each of them have got armor two. They've also got co coordinated attack lone swordsman. Makes sense. Um, they've got group, um, and then they've got hatred tengu, and they got prowess melee one. Um, they've got um, practice uh, so practiced practice maneuver. Um, which is a key feat, um, and it's uh, two key. You have to be active, and it only affects each of them. Uh, so when applying melee assist penalties for a melee exchange involving lone swordsman, this model inflicts minus two dice rather than minus one until the current activation, so the current melee exchange is resolved. Uh, that's really, really good. So you can take down like a big hit up by, you know, if, if both of them are in combat uh, with that model. The unique effects is linked. So if this model is killed, instead put the model elsewhere. In the starting phase, place any lone swordsmen that are elsewhere into play with no marked damage boxes in base base contact with a lone swordsman model. If both lone swordsman models are elsewhere at the same time, remove them from play. These models must always declare the same action unless one of them performs a charge. When a lone swordsman would generate key tokens or otherwise gain key tokens, instead place those key tokens on this card. Either lone swordsman model may spend key tokens from the key, so from the card to play key uh, feats, boosts, or other effects. This model cannot be, so cannot have enhancement cards attached. These models uh, may be recruited into any warband that rec uh, recruits Hiroto. Um, so yeah, they've got a lot of rules there. That ability being able to be placed elsewhere. Uh, so what you would probably do is you would you, you you would be working with them because they're a group. They'll be working together, so they move at the same time. Um, you would I would be targeting like a larger model and basically having one of them sort of like do defense to strip activation tokens. And the other one would be like pretty much like into attack as much as possible, um, especially with practice size maneuvers. Um, yeah, they're not bad in the 25 rounds. I would, I yeah. would take them. Uh, they and can re be realistically, by... the, the thing with these guys is that if you're going to want to take them out, you need to, you have to take both of them out. Otherwise, you're just wasting your turn, really. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so these guys can be taken by Shiho, makes sense. Uh, Colt, interesting. Uh, Silvermoon, uh, um, Jong, uh, the Dissension or Tengu, and also uh, the Ninjas. Mm. So that's pretty interesting. Um, I like them for 25 rice. I would definitely be taking them for sure. Um, I actually, for Ninjas, this is, this is something that they really don't have a lot of access to. I, I like this for ninjas especially. I mean, I like them regardless. They are good, but for ninjas especially. And yeah, and you've got all those ninja models sitting around not doing anything. Um, so, you know, you could, you know, you could. Um, I'm pretty sure also if you don't, uh, just letting everybody know, if you don't buy this box set, um, you can actually buy, uh, say, say, for example, from uh, the combat company uh, where I bought mine, uh, you can buy the individual models and they'll come with the card. Um, from the uh, GCT Studio uh, store. Um, obviously, ah. you wouldn't get all of the. Um, uh, you wouldn't also get all the enhancement cards or anything like that um, without buying the box set. Uh, that's what the purpose of the box set is. Yeah. Um, so I've got two dogs fighting at the moment, trying to over over an antler. Um, 
I I like it. these. Okay, so these guys have got. I mean, yeah, they've got the armor too. That helps. Uh, the mm. coordinated attack that that works in their favor, and you would definitely be keeping them together all the time. Um, I like the fact that Katani they have Counter Strike Defense One. That's really really good. Um, and then sidestep defense. Uh, sorry, sidestep attack zero is also really really good. I think I might have said sidestep defense before, which is incorrect. Um, the only I think the only weakness for these guys is like the fact that they've only got five wounds. Um, yeah. So you know, if they take a hit, they can you know they'll they'll take a hit. The armor will help them, but um, no, I think these guys are really cool. Um, I would definitely. I would definitely take them for sure. Yeah, no, I, I really like these guys as well. There's definitely a lot of room for these guys. Um, yeah, no, I really like it. The, the only thing that I find really, really weird. So they have hatred Tengu, but they're willing to work with them. Um, yeah, so... I mean, I guess money talks, but it just seems really weird. Um, the way that hatred works is... Um, this applies at the start of the game. This model cannot be included in a warband that includes descriptor models. Um, so in this case, it would be Tengu. Um, but that being said, you could use these. These guys will do really re well in the hill with the hill tribes. Um, that would give them some massive that's support. A, yeah, like that's a, a good point. Yeah, there is more in the faction than just the actual Tengu. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, Actually, they would do really good with the with the uh, with them. Yeah, because... no, that that's actually a good point. I I'd, I'd forgotten about that. I was like, how does that work? Because they can't anyway. Yeah, no, that that makes complete sense. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, I mean, but also I mean, you gain uh, you, uh yeah. No, these guys, these guys are good. Melee prowess one, not bad at all, especially for mm -hmm. a combat models. Always really good. All samurai have pretty much have melee prowess one. Um, yeah, I like them a lot. And the fact that they've got reach, that's that's always helpful. Yeah. All right. And given that we're talking about the Brotherhood, there's only two characters that are not in this box. Do you want to take your oldest brother or do you want to take the the Hiroto himself? Uh, which one? What, what, should we talk on which one? Which Hiroto did you want to talk on? Uh, Drunken I've, Master or... I've got Drunken Master up ready if you want. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll talk about Drunken Master if you want. Um, yep. so, uh, he's fifteen rice. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure we talked about Hiroto in the Shiho. Yes. Uh, fact, the uh, but yeah, so Drunken Master. This is a he was like a limited uh, release sort of model. If you can gain uh, get him, he's not bad. He, sorry, he's not bad at all to have. Plus, also he's a really he's a nice looking model um, as well. Uh, Hiroto Drunken Master. He is fifteen rice. He's a samurai. He's got melee pool of three. Uh, he can boost that for three. He's got a range pool of three. He can boost that for three. He's got movement four. Uh, he's a bit tough. Uh, so he's got uh, seven health, uh, which is just good sort of amount of health. He's got, um, he generates three key a turn and he can hold six. Not bad. He's got a die show, which gives him plus one strength. He's, uh, which he has a charging bonus of pierce one. Not bad. He gains powerful attack one, sweep attack one, and sweep defense one. That's that's actually pretty good. Um, he's got assassin. Uh, he's got booted, endurance, fearless, flank, immune to stun, melee prowess one. He's tough one, vengeance prefecture. Uh, so that covers the whole entire faction. Anything with prefecture, that's not bad at all. Um, booted is really cool. I think we talked about it, but basically when he uses uh, flank. He can make a movement action um, directly after that, which which is, which is really good. Uh, he has two key abilities. One is called Dirty Fighter, um, which is uh, two key. He has to be active, and it just affects him. Uh, the enemy models cannot declare the use of special attack or defense in melee exchanges with this model until the current activation is resolved. That's really, really cool. In fact, it's quite dirty. Um, he's got Stagger, uh, which is one key and it's an instant. Um, it just affects him. Uh, this model gains range defense one and sidestep defense zero until the end of the current active mission. That's really, really cool. Uh, especially for somebody who has no armor. <laughs> you can get harder yeah. to hit. His unique effects, uh, this is where he has like you know a bit of a bit of a downfall. Uh, he's got drunken. Uh, so for each VP scored by this model's warband, this model gains dodge one 
and minus one to its key statistic. Um, when this model's warband scores a VP, remove all this model's key tokens. So when you score one, you basically, anything that you have banked, you lose it straight away. Um, and uh, his, unique, his last unique effect is this model may, may be included in any themed warband that includes Eldest Brother. Uh, and he's on a 30 mil base. Uh, he can be taken by uh, by Tengu. He can also be taken by um, uh, Jong and Sylvan. Um, it's interesting that he can't be taken by um, by Shi uh, by Shiho, but it yeah. kind of makes sense all buyers because he's sort of like uh oh, he's you know he's he's sort of like left and they haven't really sort of united yet. Um, yeah, because this, you know, this is before he sobered back up again. Pretty much. Um, so just having a quick look between the two, when he sobers up, he gains another in his melee pool and in his ranged. Um, otherwise... He gains armor? Oh, yeah, he gains armor as well, yeah. And obviously yeah. He, he loses the drunkard thing because he's now sobered yeah. up. So, and yeah. you're looking at 15 versus 27. So... Yeah, he also gained, he also becomes a, a way better uh, fighter with um, uh, Eagle Flight's Defense Zero, which is really cool. So you can basically do the attack and then movement. Yeah. Um, yeah. Funny enough, he also gains Hatred Drunken Master. So if you're playing a, a, a person who has Drunken Master, he really hates the person that he used to be. Um, uh, yeah, he, he's pretty cool. Um, and then he gets a bunch of different other key feats like Improvise, uh, Kaisho. And overall, which is not bad. Um, I mean, I think we've already touched on those in the uh, the Shiho faction, uh, Shiho video, which yeah. you should have, <laughs> I guess. Um, did you want to talk about Eldest Brother or? Yeah, I think it's just, just it is in the episode, but I just want to touch on him because he does work with this war band. It's where he was obviously originally supposed to be going. Um, he's eighteen rice. He's an, an Onisho. He's got three melee. He can boost it for three. He can move four. He has eight health. He doesn't have any ranged. He generates two key, but he can hold six. And he's holding a club. And it's a big club, just for the record. Uh, plus two strength. Brutal one. Reach. Slam attack one. Sweep attack one. And push defense one. He has bravery. Fear six. He's immune to stunned. He's got Carter. Oni Rage, Regenerate 1, Resistance 1, and Tough 1. Mm. He has the ability Consume Soul. It'll cost you 1 key. It's an instant. It's a pulse within 3 inches. When an enemy model is killed within 3 inches of this model, this model may heal X wounds, where X is equal to the removed model's key statistic. Um, it's only once per turn. He also has mm. Chan... Chinoyu, which will cost you one. You need to be active, and it only affects him. Remove all Berserk, Blind, Death Sentence, Diseased, Fire, Impetuous, Poison, Spirit Block, and Stunned Markers from this model. So pretty much everything, apart from Prone. Um, his unique effect. This model may be included in any themed warband that includes Hiroto. When recruited into a warband with Hiroto, this model gains flank and always deploys in base-to-base -base with Hiroto when he deploys. Um, so you can't separate them, basically. Uh, this model may be included in Savage Waves themes as if it were a Savage Wave faction model. Uh, and he works with Cult of Your Eye, Jung, Savage Wave, Silver Moon, and the Temple. Makes sense. That's where he's picked up Carter from. Yeah. So one, so ones count towards um, uh, melee. Uh, you know, that's that's good. Um, I think we touched on it in self, uh, Savage uh, Wave episode. I, I said I really like this guy a lot. Yeah. Because uh, he is a he is a workhorse. Um, I played in a tournament and uh, sorry, the the CanCon tournament, and him and drunk. Uh, I think it was him and Drunken Master both appeared. Um, on the on the left hand side of, of the table, uh, on my left hand side, and I tell you what, having him on the board like really put me at 
pause for a moment. Like I, I was like, okay, how do I deal with that problem? Yeah. Um, he's and and he was really really good. Uh, so much so that I I ended up building and painting my eldest brother uh, model because I was just I was like, this guy is amazing. I I, I want to, you know, I was I was blown away by how good he was. Um, I had yeah. to basically play complete defense. Um, with with him. Uh, yeah. Uh, eventually took him down, but it took a it took a lot. Um, and a lot of commitment to doing that. Um, yeah, he's really good. Um, if you can fit him in, I mean, uh, the box set itself is is already about like it's, it's pretty, um, you know, costly uh, point wise. But you can you know do do some tweaking, take models that you you know you don't want to have in the in that, and include him if you wanted with uh, Hiroto. Yeah, be really really cool. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you don't even have to have him because you can say you can have him with Hiroto. Um, as if, yeah, you can, yeah, he's really, really good. Yeah, I mean, you don't need him with Hiroto, but you're definitely um, getting flank and stuff is nothing to be laughing about. This it's quite decent. Yeah. It's really good. So yeah, that being said, um, eldest brother, you know, being taken with a bunch of the Brotherhood um, models, um, yeah, would work pretty well. It'll give you yeah. a big another sort of heavy hitter in the in the faction. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you're right. With with flank, he becomes even better. I, I think the big thing to take away from Ronan is Ronan, first and foremost, is not a faction. It's supposed to be mercenaries for the game. That's what they're supposed to be. If you want to build your yeah. force around them, you certainly can do that. But I think it would be fair to say that this is not somewhere we would recommend starting the game unless you were doing Brotherhood. I certainly would not be recommending to try and build around the other themes from this as a start. Um, that's something that would be more recommending for people that have been in the game for a little bit and want yeah, to expand. Uh, I would agree. Um, the only other, maybe the only thing I would maybe deal into um, as a potential for if a new person wanted to start running is Imperial March. It's quite a simple uh sort of theme and your models are pretty reliable like the sisters are quite uh quite reliable the golden sentinels are the sisters well. are really nice yeah they're, they're very yeah they're beautiful models as well um yeah so yeah ronin's quite interesting i mean we we could also touch on some of like our favorite sort of like uh ronin models out there um a lot of the kami are really good so if if you wanted to add some stuff to your your armies I recommend Kami for sure. Get like you know, fire Kami are, are the are the pardon the pun the new hotness at the moment. Um, yeah, they're they're all they're all quite interesting. Like I like the silverbacks for Temple because you can go quite um, you know monkey heavy, and they're quite a good they're quite a strong sort of hitter. Um, the Grey Pilgrim is you know um, it's a bit of a dated model, but it's still quite nice. It holds up quite well. That's quite a, a good model to have. Um, yeah, there's, there's so many models in the in the uh, in the Ronin sort of um, cool chest uh, to basically yeah. put wherever you. Want. Um, but yeah, if you're a starter and you wanted to add a couple of models because you like you know rule of cool and everything, go for it. Um, yeah, I definitely don't want to talk anybody out of buying in, into this. It's just cool. like you you need to remember what they were originally designed for. Um, yeah. And I mean, the, the Brotherhood box is definitely a place that you could start. Uh, is it the easiest place to start? No, Minimoto still exists. Uh, but I reckon it'd be easier to play than the Ninjas for a starter. I, I wouldn't actually argue that Ronin are hard mode. Not quite like the Ninjas were. But it's still no. probably not the place I would start outside of the Brotherhood. Just because yeah. th so, there's more work you have to do. Yeah, the way I would phrase it is like, so if you're if you're starting a faction... Um, and you, there are, the Ronin are used to to fill in some slots or some abilities that your faction might not have access to. Um, like a, a good example of that is, I mean, uh, with 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 uh, Shoshutsu, with Minamoto, being able to remove like Mark is like poisoned and stuff like that. I've got blacksmith models that can, you know, they can set a fire to everybody. Sorry, there's one blacksmith model that can set fire to everybody and then remove all those markers, but I'm still on fire. Whereas this this guy would be able to remove poison, fire, bleed, and everything like that. Yeah. Um, or disease. 
Americans and all those cinema markets. So this shows you that Ronin have sort of like a like those models serve a purpose. Um, you know, and you might not necessarily he might he might not fit in any of the Minamoto themes, but the fact you know I could I could use him with my my faction if I wanted to. That's what you can sort of do. Um, yeah. and they're they're used to add a little bit of personality into into your faction. It's, be, it's probably the best way we could sort of like put it. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the benefit with Ronan over just standard mercenaries is, unlike a lot of games where it's kind of like just like they're just there and then you pick them up when you want them. But these guys actually they do feel like a faction. Which is why I feel that people get confused about that all the time. Again, they're not a faction. You can't take Ronan in a tournament, and you can't pick Ronan as your faction. Yeah, that's that's how we. They're always working for somebody else. Yeah, I, yeah. Because if we say you can't take Ronan in, in a in a tournament, that basically says, "Oh, you can't take." Ronin. I just don't want anyone to have that misconception. Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah. But look, the only I reason mean, I keep on I, coming back to this, and, and Bushido players will know this already. It comes up in the Discord all the time. It comes up in the Facebook yeah. groups all the time because this confuses everybody. It's the reason that yeah. I started the fa- started the video that way, and it's the same reason why I'm mentioning it at the end. Yeah, I, I'd be really interested to see how, like, with the new two player starter, like how those two families would go in in a in a in a tournament, like yeah. which, which way they go, like which, um, you know, what they would take, like you know. Um, to add to boost, you know, um, I'll, yeah, um, it's there's a lot of new models coming out and everything like that, so it's it's quite interesting to see like a bit of a shake up. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, th- there's plenty to choose from, you know, and you just got to keep an eye on that sort of on the faction logos on the back. Um, I've seen also on the Discord people ask that question. It's like, what do those mean? And it's just like, well, that means you can go with blah. But yeah, it's yeah. For somebody who's just watching this and like learning or wanting to know, look, yeah, you could you can add lots of stuff to your um to your models, uh, sorry, to your warband. Yeah. Um, and there's there's yeah, the I would say rule of cool. If you want to buy some stuff, you know, and work it in, you can do an ordered for battle list, or you could do you know you, you can do that. Just yeah, try yeah. it out, ask questions. Don't feel like you're stu- any anything's a stupid question. Yeah, on especially on the Discord, go for it. Agreed. Yeah. Like this, look. This is the end of the main series, as far as Enter the Joir is concerned. It's not the end of the Abushido content, and there will be more Enter the Joir coming. Uh, but this is the last of the factions at this point. Um, we've gotten endless amounts of help from the Discord, especially. Um, from here, um, next episodes will be at least a few weeks away. We don't have any exact timing on that. But we will be covering the special rules and so forth for and going through those and some more shorter videos. Uh, just to start firing through those, we'll go through a few each episode. Um, but Ben and I are still looking at how we want to aim that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we've been mainly so this this so the this sort of series is mainly sort of focusing on like. A starter box set, yeah, and then a bit of a, a touch on the faction and you know what to add potentially, you know, as as like as we're not experts, but like we're sort of giving our opinion as and like, well, look, you know, for someone who's starting out fresh or new, maybe these models might be cool, or you know, we're yeah, that's how it sort of we sort of started it. Yeah, um, who knows? There might be new box sets um, coming down the line for factions. We don't know. Um, uh, they did sort of say uh, when they. And we touched on it in the Shiho episode, um, is that the and also the Cult of Uri episode um, that majority of each faction will have like um, a faction starter box set and then sort of like a themed like a sub faction. Um, so, for example, Open Rebellion is that sub faction. So, um, no doubt down the line, there's going to be some more box sets coming um, yeah. because they sort of, that's what they have said. Uh, we'll definitely touch on each of those box sets when they come out. This particular series, when we kind of started it, the idea was we wanted this to become a resource for new players that we couldn't find when we were getting into the game. Um, so hopefully people have been finding this helpful, not just... I mean, we obviously want the existing players to find it helpful too, but hopefully the new people, even in hopefully two or three years' time when they're finding this, 
hopefully is still relevant. Um, but yeah, otherwise, thank you, Ben. This wouldn't have been possible without you, quite literally. Um, <laughs> and otherwise, see you soon. Watch this I'll remind race. you. Yep. Thank you very much for checking out this video. If you're enjoying the content of this channel, please like and subscribe. If you're in a position to do so, please check out patreon.com slash getting tabled. You receive early access to at least 80% of all videos that we put out, and you get access to the video edition of all of our podcasts the day that they're uploaded. If you'd like to check us out on social media, facebook.com slash getting tabled is the most active. We also have a Discord server. You can email our team at gettingtabled at gmail.com. If you're on either Twitter or Instagram, you can find us at gettingtabled. And until next time, play more.